All right, we're going to get ready for our next session. Okay. And it's going to be Florida. It's different here. That's the title. That's the actual title. <laughs> and it is. Thank you. It is different here. So Steve Murray. Come on up. Steve is the Communications Director, Florida Department of Veterans Affairs. Jason McCandless, Assistant Secretary, Florida Department of Children and Families. And we have Simon Paulin, Hillsborough County Agribusiness Development Manager, UF IFAS. Hillsborough County Extension. And finally, Justin Dal Coletto. He's a flight school director at Legends Airways. We're going to go ahead with our questions. So the hottest industries and job markets in Florida might not be what you think, and we're here to help you find out more. Also, discover veteran-specific state benefits and learn about quality of life amenities for you and your family that make Florida the most sought after state. So my question, so a lot of other states, and this is for all, a lot of other states try, they try to attract veterans and service members. What makes Florida different from the others? And I know the Lieutenant Governor mentioned some, some items, but to you, what makes Florida different from the other states that's more attractive? Well, I'll start out. Uh, I'm Steve Murray, by the way. I'm the Communications and External Affairs Director for the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs. And uh, I'm an airman, and I'm an OIF veteran as well. So welcome, all of you. Um, what makes Florida unique uh, that the other states? Well, you have the obvious. You know, we have tourism. We have a wonderful climate, as in weather climate. Uh, we have uh, no state income tax, and those things alone drive a lot of veterans and their families to Florida. Plus, with all of the active duty military installations that our state has, we have many active duty service members and their families transiting through Florida during their career. And as a result, they see Florida firsthand. They think, hmm, this might be a nice place to retire or settle if I separate and don't you know, spend a full career in the military. So we get a lot of that. Then over the last 10 or 15 years, we've had a concerted effort in our state to attract veterans and their families from other states to come into the Sunshine State because we recognize the value of veterans. Uh, and so we, we offer not only access to federal VA benefits, but the state of Florida uh, through various governors and legislatures have ponied up millions and millions of dollars in programs, license fee, and the lieutenant governor spoke on, on many of them, looking at license uh, fee waivers and license waivers to be able to bring your expertise back to Florida without having to start at, uh, you know, English 101 when you get back despite a career in that particular a career field and all the things that you've done in the military, your technical training, the schools that you attended, you know, there's got to be some credit to that. So our role in the Florida Department of Veterans Affairs is to connect you and your families uh, with earned benefit services and support. It can be a federal benefit, could be something like the post 9-11 GI Bill or a VA home loan, it could be access to VA health care in our medical centers and clinics in the state or it could be uh, filing for a service-connected disability or something along those lines, a lot of things. But so we don't double-dip our Florida taxpayers. We offer other programs uh, within the state that augment it. We, uh, we do beyond the post-9-11 GI Bill for a lot of education benefits, do a lot of things with other state agencies to make sure that we attract veterans and keep veterans and their spouses. The lieutenant governor was spot on talking about family members being just as important as the veteran um, in, in obtaining services. And so that's just one quick thing, and we'll be here all day and through the conference. 
Thank right. you. So I'll just share, you know, for my family and I, we really looked at um, not shoveling snow. Um, so, you know, I spent five years in North Dakota. We loved our time there, but um, 182 days, it did not reach zero. And so we were, we're happy to, um, we also spent a lot of time in Colorado, spent almost eight years. So I'm, I'm retired Space Force. Any other Space Force people? All right. So I think I was in the top, the first 10 people to retire from the Space Force. Obviously, I did over 18 and a half years in the Air Force okay. and then a little over two and a half years in the Space Force. Um, and so loved getting to stand up the new service, do those kind of things. Um, but really, I think for my spouse and I and, and our family was the, the warmer weather and not wanting to travel snow. So all the, obviously, all the great things have been talked about. But for us, the weather was a factor. Awesome. Thank you. Simon? Well, like my co-panelist here, I'm, I'm usually the only guy in the room in these events that um, uh, wearing cowboy boots and, and work in agriculture. And uh, some of the previous panelists were talking about diver diversity of Florida. Well, the diversity of agriculture in Florida is, is enormous. There's over 60 commercial crops grown in Hillsborough County and over 300 in the state. And what peop most people don't realize is Agriculture is the second largest industry, both here in Hillsborough County and in the state of Florida. So there's a, a very diverse, large uh, agricultural industry in, in Florida. And that's what attracted me here and the beaches, you know, mm -hmm. and, and the craft beer. So yeah, Great weather for farming. I grew up on an island farm, and I used to plant all my food pretty much. And I tried to look for a piece of land to just have a family farm or family garden. I haven't found it as yet because it's so expensive right now, but um, I can definitely uh, relate to farming, you know, because that's our, our source of food, but I would love to have my own little one soon. So maybe I'll be talking to you about agriculture in the, in the near future. All right, uh, Justin. Yeah, good <laughs> afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here again this year. It's my second year attending this, uh, this conference here. Uh, as Steve brought up earlier, you know, I think Florida is in a very unique position simply because of the large active presence of service members in the state of Florida uh, that have spent their time in the military and are now transitioning out. They're already local here to the state. So I think the investment uh, specifically from the state legislature and Veterans Florida, uh, creating organizations like that, sponsoring uh, employers with SkillBridge uh, programs, which I'll be glad to speak on a little bit more because uh, that's really my experience in. I used to manage a skill bridge program for my previous employer. Uh, but taking a look at those benefits, specifically on the focus of transitioning service members, uh, expansion of licensure uh, programs. Uh, recently, my father-in-law took advantage of the new teacher program for certification for teachers, uh, which provides a five-year temporary teaching certificate in the state of Florida. Uh, and the nice part of that program as well, it's advantageous for uh, veterans pursuing an undergraduate degree because uh, it does allow you to get into the classroom without an undergraduate degree and gives you five years uh, experience to be able to get that undergrad before you can continue teaching. Uh, so, you know, plenty of benefits in the state of Florida. Uh, specifically on my side, I'm also a staff sergeant in the Florida Air National Guard. Uh, so I take advantage of some of the Florida National Guard benefits for those looking to continue their service. Uh, the state of Florida offers the Educational Dollars for Duty program, uh, which pays 100% of an undergrad degree on the state of Florida without having to tap into any of your GI Bill funds. Uh, so it allows you to apply them towards a more advanced or graduate degree. So um, again, plenty plenty of benefits. Interesting. Thanks for sharing that. I, I wasn't aware about education benefits for the National Guard. Um, so with, with that said, what industries are growing in Florida and what kind of high wage jobs are being created? Any of you can answer this. Well, I'll start out because I'm in the business of growing. Mm -hmm. So agriculture is, is growing. It's a large business, and, and it's very diverse. We don't necessarily have the highest wage jobs compared to other industries like the lieutenant governor man, mentioned uh, in IT and whatnot. But uh, we, we established the Veterans Florida Agriculture Program several years ago as an intern internship program for, for veterans transitioning out of service or service members transitioning out of service to get into the agriculture industry. And, and kind of as the sales pitch for that, I always say, hey, you like sweating your butt off, you like rolling around in the dirt and not get shot at? then sign up for this program. Um, I've rarely been shot at in the field. Um, 
So uh, it and it's fun. It's just uh, it 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 uh, it it's a purposeful life. Uh, a lot of veterans are getting out of the service. They they miss that purpose, that mission, and and being in agriculture, you get that purpose. You get that mission set. Hey, it's harvest season. I got one month, or I've got three months where this is a job. I'm getting up at 4 a.m. and I'm working until 10 at night to get this mission done. And then afterwards, you're you're on rest or leave, and and then go back into the next season. So it's very very interesting, well fit for veterans. Yeah, I would say on uh, you talk about mission and and being able to contribute. You know, as I was transitioning out the state, working for the state of Florida was not really in my top things of like, oh, I think I'm going to do that. As as Exa talked about, I was able to do a skill bridge program with the Department of Economic Opportunity and realized that there's great mission happening. You can really still serve. You're still supporting Floridians. Um, you have a great mission. You have a purpose. You're um, getting programs and things out to the people that need them. And so Department of Economic Opportunity was a great place for me to start there. Uh, I've also been on out to work at the Department of Children and Families. And so now supporting the services that are going to those uh, families and children in need is really a great way to contribute and give back. And so there's lots of other opportunities, as we talked about, that wasn't in my, you know, the things I was thinking about as I was thinking about networking or getting with people and saying, hey, what, what types of opportunities out there? I would say the state of Florida is, you know, can, all kinds of opportunities all around the state. It's not just in Tallahassee. Um, but if you like to have trees around you, please consider Tallahassee as an option. Mm -hmm. um, but um, just consider that as a something to, as you look at transitioning out, that the state of Florida has many opportunities there. Okay. And you talk about transitioning, and everyone can, an, or anyone can answer this one. Um, what are some skills that, what some ways that veterans can fine tune their skills before transitioning out? You know, so I was, I was, was a vice commander for Space Delta Four, which did all missile warning for America. So I consider myself pretty high level as far as um, capability and ability to get network and do different things. Um, but I, I will tell you that the transition was harder than I expected it to be. So that's something I would just share with people is, you know, if you feel like it's going to be easy, the opportunity is going to be right there, you're going to come out and you're like, you know, I have two master's degrees, it's going to be easy, I have a clearance that's going to be, people are going to scoop me up and it was not as easy as I expected it to be. Um, and so there was a lot of days where I was kind of up and down. And, uh, fortunately, other veterans were around and continued like, to encourage. And um, so I did probably 80 to 100 informal interviews where you meet people on LinkedIn and connect with them and then have a discussion. Many of them helped me highlight the things I don't want to do. Like I realized I'm not really a sales guy. I don't really want to be on the that kind of side of things, but that's okay. I found other opportunities to go after and, and find opportunity. Um, so I would say just be open and, and know that it's kind of a process. Um, but reach out and rely on your network of other veterans and people out there to, for help. So, How many of you are still on active duty? Oh, wow. We have a large number. Okay, so yeah, please elaborate more if you can. Yeah, we them. have all been there, and it is scary. And my wife said that was the worst time, Those that period between uh, terminal leave and getting the job out of the out of the military was the worst time because you're always in the house and you're always grouchy because you're looking for a job and you know you put in a hundred resumes and you maybe get one phone call and they say no thanks and you go what's that all about because it's like I'm a master degree out of the yin yang and no one's calling me back I thought it was God's gift to airmen and now what's happening so I think the fact that you're here number one networking is a positive sign you know getting rid of the acronyms and spelling things out and trying to translate what you do with your MOS or your AFSC or whatever and, and civilianize it. And the Veterans Florida team here and my Department of Veterans Affairs team here, you know, network with them. They help resume writing. They help with interview skills and things like that to help get you in the door. Because, you know, once you once you get in the door, once you get face to face with somebody, that's your that's your elevator speech. That's your time to shine. And that's when you stand above head and shoulders above our non-military members who are competing for some of the same jobs. So once you, you just got to get in the door. So, you know, I applaud you for being here. Talk to some of the experts in resume writing, elevator speeches, you know, have your 15-second speech because you never know who you're going to run into at the mall or shopping or doing whatever. All of a sudden it's like, oh, my gosh, 15 seconds, and that, that was the hiring person right there, and I didn't know it. So. 
and, and think about something for those of you who are transitioning or, you know, about to get out. Think about doing something that you love. Um, don't, don't just go because you have the experience because this is going to be your livelihood and it's, you're going to quit real quickly if you are doing something that you don't really love. And so that's my personal advice and I'm going through this because I'm sharing it because I went through it. Um, so it, it's not about, of course, it's a business, so you're looking to make profit. But when it's all said and done, do your best to do what you love. Yeah, if you're going to start start your business. Anyone else wanted to add to that? Yeah, I'll just add to that as well. I mean, yeah. as everyone uh, else said here on the panel, lean into your network. Uh, I know it's a very cliche saying, but your network is your net worth, especially when it comes to transitioning out of the service. Uh, if you don't have a LinkedIn, get a LinkedIn and connect with all the people that you have served with in the past. Send LinkedIn requests, message employers that you're interested in working for. Uh, I know it sounds difficult or you don't want to be pestering people, uh, but that's what recruiters are there for. So reach out to recruiters. If you connect with a recruiter at a specific company that you're interested in working with, reach out to them, send them an email, send them your resume, bring up your interest. They may not have a position you're looking for that fits with you right now at that moment, but they're going to remember that interaction. They're going to remember you. And they're also going to be, you're going to be the first person they're going to reach out once they have that position open. Okay. Steve, can you name a few programs Florida Department of Veterans Affairs has that benefits the military community when it comes to entrepreneurship? Well, I think Veterans Florida is one prime example. That came out of an idea through the legislature and signed into law by a previous Florida governor to establish this program to help transitioning service members uh, gain uh, meaningful employment, not flipping hamburgers for thirteen seventy-five an hour, but gaining meaningful employment. There's so many good things that we can do in the state of Florida. You know, we've already mentioned many of them, but it's just, you know, we want to value your worth. And I think valuing the worth of our veterans is something we've worked awfully hard on the last couple of decades here. I've been in this job almost 18 years now. So I've seen through four Florida governors do this. And as we try to set Florida above the other states, because we informally compete against each other for the benefits and services that we provide to our veterans and families, because we know the talent that our service members and our veterans hold in our society. They make great employees and become leaders, and soon they are hiring other veterans in whatever business or even in, in government, whether it be city, county, or state. So we understand the importance. We've worked awfully hard. In your welcome kits today, in those backpacks, you'll find the 2023 edition of the Florida Veterans Benefits Guide. I encourage you to read it at your leisure because it connects all of the state benefits that you've earned, pairing with all the federal benefits. We try not to duplicate so we don't double dip our taxpayers. But uh, I encourage you to look at that and meet with some of our counselors who are here tonight and tomorrow, and uh, we'll answer your specific questions. Thank you. And also Volk Rehab. <laughs> I know that's one of them that I looked into. Uh, for Jason, what was your skill bridge experience and how did it help you ease your worries uh, when it comes to transitioning into um, civilian world? <laughs> yeah, so I was in Colorado trying to figure out, you know, I'm trying to move to Florida. Um, you know, I knew if I stayed in, in Colorado, I had a network there, but moving to Florida where I did not have one was very, a little bit scary as we were talking about where should we go and um, what types of jobs should I be looking for. Um, reaching, connecting with Colby at Veterans Florida that then got me connected to Exit. Um, was a great connection, and, and that was very helpful for me. Um, you know, I wasn't even sure what the Department of Economic Opportunity did when I applied for the internship, and so when they reached out and said, hey, we'd like to bring you bring you there, I was so excited just to have an internship. You know, like I said, I was looking for the opportunity, what's the next thing? Um, and so was able to come in and then realize, oh, I have a lot to offer as far as helping grow the team. Uh, you know, the, the programs amazingly are, right, it's federal government, military kind of programs. It's state government is... There are people and programs just like you were interacting with before. Um, and so you really can bring a lot of value to those those teams and just finding a way to connect. And within just a few weeks, they were like, we want to hire you. And, you know, I had multiple opportunities to work within the department. 
um, and so I was able to be a, a assistant deputy secretary there, and then was just recently, May 1st, I started as assistant secretary at the Department of Children and Families. And so that's the other thing I would share with you is know that what you're doing the first few months as you get out may not be the same thing you're doing two or three years. This is not your forever job, right? It's the transition job to the next job that's going to be another transition, um, and that's okay. Um, you know, you think about your, our military careers, we start out in one thing and you move up pretty quickly. Remember that for your thing about your civilian time is, you know, it, it's okay and normal to kind of go through phases. Um, my wife and I talked about that for our house too, is we're like, are we, tr we have to find this perfect house. Well, let's find a house and then we'll see where we are. We'll live there for a few years and then, but this doesn't have to be our forever house, you know, so just, you're not having to make the decision that is the decision, you know, just make, make the, each decision as you go. Yeah, it's okay yeah. to change change your mind and don't stress about it. It's a it's a process. Trust me, yeah. it's a process. Uh, for Jason, what was your uh, what would you say? Actually, Justin, let's do this. Um, and this may be the last question. Okay, what advice do you have for someone transitioning um, or interested in aviation? Because it's it's not a common one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. So absolutely. So uh, I actually currently work for uh, Flight Schedule Pro. We develop enterprise. Uh, software for flight training organizations oversee our book of business here on the East Coast. Uh, and of course, one of our largest uh, presences is here in Florida. Uh, more flight training happens in the state of Florida than anywhere else in the world. Uh, we're generating pilots not only for the United States, uh, but for Asia, Europe, LATAM. So, you know, when it looks, when you looked at pursuing careers in aviation, you know, the, the natural thought process goes, well, you know, commercial pilot, commercial airline pilot. And, you know, that was, you know, my initial thought as well. I'm going to be a commercial airline pilot, but now I sit at home and uh, work on software and uh, work with our customers and, and clients. So when we look at aviation, there's there's not just a pilot route. There's uh, technicians. There's people that work, like in my role, with uh, software development, supporting organizations, uh, maintenance planning, dispatch, air traffic control. Uh, so there's so many different career paths. And uh, as Lieutenant Governor brought up earlier, you know, aerospace and now uh, space is expanding, you know, with Space Florida. Uh, I know they control a lot of the uh, launch facilities here in the state of Florida, uh, partnering with SpaceX and Blue Origin. So there's not a better time to get involved with aviation. Uh, I know it's a somewhat of a niche market, uh, but it is definitely something that can be tapped into. And specifically with uh, veteran skills, with being able to come in, you know, a lot of these jobs require you to have a clearance ahead of time. Uh, so having that experience, having that clearance, uh, it makes for the transition a lot easier. So if anyone has any specific questions for me, you know, after this uh, conference on aviation careers, I'll be glad to chat with you all about it. Outstanding. Thank you all so much. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming out. <laughs>